Well, guys, we're in a series. Today is the final in it. It's called, I called it, Hope in the Dark. And so we've been talking about this subject because why? It's important to recognize that in our walk of faith, that we're studying together the book of Habakkuk. Maybe you never read it before. I'm hoping that you read it with me through the course of this series because it has stood as a understanding of what true faith is. The very theme of the book is the just shall live by faith. And Habakkuk is so powerful because it's about realism. And I told you, it's okay through the course of it, to bring God your concerns, to bring God the things that can be frustrating, the things that you don't understand. Because what's unique about this book is that it's not a normal prophetic book in the sense that God is speaking through the prophet to the people. It's a book about the prophet's lament. He brings back to God what he's concerned about. And God answers him, and there's this dialogue that goes back and forth. And that's why I want you to know, God's big enough to handle whatever you're concerned about. Whatever, because why? Because we've learned through the course of this series that strong faith is not built on the mountaintop experiences with God, but it's built in the valleys. It's built when life is dark, when you don't understand what's going on, and you still choose to trust in God. When life doesn't make sense, I will say, God, I believe in you. I trust in you. And so when we're tempted to complain, when we wonder, God, where are you? Why aren't you doing something? Don't you care? That was the prophet's lament. He pulled it out to God. See, trusting is most difficult when it's dark. But faith is based, listen to me, it's based on the character of God. It's based on the realization that he's God and we're not. And that we trust him because he has never changed. Habakkuk was a minor prophet and his book is for us in these days because he's asking God this question. Listen, all the corruption going on in my nation, the people of God, I don't get it, God. Why aren't you dealing with it? Don't you care? Why aren't you dealing? And God tells him, I'm going to handle this. I got it under control. And then he tells him what he's going to do. And he said, it'll amaze everybody. You probably won't understand it. And as soon as he reveals, I'm raising up the Babylonians, they will take care of this. Habakkuk's immediate response is, what? That doesn't make any sense. They're worse than us. And God's got, I got it under control. Because you and I need to realize he's God and we're not. See, part of the realization for us is the fact that we come to the grips with the truth that God is God. And we're best learn faith when we stop trying to figure out how God is going to answer what he's promised us in our lives. See, Habakkuk, we learn his name means to wrestle and to embrace. To wrestle and to embrace. And so in truth, what we discover in this, this book is in teaching us that it's okay to both wrestle and to embrace. Because in chapter one, we learn it was about wondering. Whenever there's a crisis of faith, when life doesn't seem to go the way you thought, when situations are beyond your understanding, and you're tempted to complain and say, you know, if I were God, I would do things differently. The realization, it's okay to wonder. Because in a crisis of faith, God would rather have you run to him and share your concerns, open up about your laments, because he can handle it. He would want a living relationship with us. So instead of running from him, he wants us to run to him. And in chapter 2, we learn what we hate to understand is that we have to wait sometimes. Because God said, though the promise linger, wait for it. And that word wait just isn't in our vocabulary in our days. In an age of microwave and Amazon and all the other things, streaming, we don't have to wait for anything today. But God said, no, wait, because we learned this last week. If it's not God's timing, you can't force it to. But when it's God's timing, you can't stop it. And that's what we've done. And so in chapter 3, it takes a different tone. And so today's message title is Hope and Glory. This is where the prophet Habakkuk finds his hope and puts his trust in God. Because last week we left off with this verse. He had come to this realization. Habakkuk 2.20, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth be silent before him. And so in essence, he remembers that God is God. And as much as you may not understand all the craziness, I mean, we're in the most 
chaotic times going on, especially ele election season always busy. And I'm going to encourage you as Christians, don't stay home because you don't like what's going on. Let your voice be heard because how can God move if his people don't believe he's big enough to move despite the circumstances? That's what you need to. So listen to me. He believes that God is God and our recovery starts when we're able to give it to God because God says, cast all of your cares upon me because I care for you. That's trusting and believing that I don't know, but God does. So in chapter 3, the prophet goes from confusion to trust, from uncertainty to embracing God is God. And so look at what he writes. In Habakkuk 3.1, he says, A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, O shingleneth. Listen, what does that word mean? You ever read one of those words in the Bible, you even have trouble pronouncing it. It's like, What? But this is so critical, so important, because this is a musical direction. Many of the Psalms were written by David. And David began this because listen to what the word uh, shingaloth means. It means a musical direction for a congregation to sing a song with wild, passionate singing and rapid changes of rhythm, high-spirited praise, and vigorous enthusiasm. That's what it means. Because you know what? When things are not going good, you know what we're tempted to do? Sing a ballad, to cry in our beer. We want to, we wanna, you know, a sad song because we want to feel sorry for ourselves. But no, here the prophet is saying, no, we need to, this is the way this song is to be sung. It is to be sung how? It is to be sung passionately, with rapid changes of rhythm, with high-spirited praise and vigorous enthusiasm. It's not mild, it's not wimpy, it, de it defies what's going on around it because do you have to ask yourself the question, does my praise, what, is it a result of my circumstances or is it a result of who God is? Because what you need to go begin to understand is this, praise is not about what? Too often, we don't feel like it, and we let our feelings so often dominate what goes on in our life. And if you allow your feelings to dominate what you believe, then you will stay in a ditch. But God is bigger than your circumstances, and your praise will bring you out. The Bible says your praise is the voice of faith, because why? It stills the avenger. Praise is the realization, because it's about who, not about what. And God never ever changes. It's praise punctuated by an exclamation mark. It's a praise that's passionate. It's a praise that, listen, it's a praise before provision, which you and I need to recognize. Faith always proceeds the promise. The pro In fact, let me help you with this. If you don't have a promise from God, then you don't have faith. The faith begins where the will of God is known. The faith, faith is not dictated by your feelings, by other people's opinions. It's based on what God said. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why I want you to be Bible readers. I need you to be in the, the book. You need to know what God said and base what you believe based on what God says. Not what CNN says or any other news agency says. Not what the papers say. Not what Instagram, Twitter, or any other thing excuse me, X, or any other thing out there is saying, okay? You need, to be, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to know what God has said and what he has promised. Because as we sang today, he's never failed. He has a track record from generation to generation to generation. And what he's done before, he will do it again. That's what you and I need to recognize. Because look at what Habakkuk wrote. In verse 2, he said this, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. In other words, God, I've seen you move. I've seen you move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You... You made a way when there seemed to be no way. And I believe, I believe you will do it again. Guys, that's just not a song. That should be the voice of our faith. The realization that God has done it before. He will do it again. It's a song sung with emotion and praise. Praise before the provision. Because why? Because he's God. He never changes. God, I've seen you work. I know your power. 
Do it again. Say that with me. Do it again. Say it not like you mean it. Do it again. See, when you're in the valley, what do you do in those dark moments, in those confusing times? See, the the prophet changes from confusion to confidence. He changes from uncertainty to an absolute grounding, a realization, because why? He said it, I know of your fame. I've heard of what you've done. And Lord, now do it again. See, so the first thing you do when you're in the valley is remember. Why? Because as soon as difficulties come our way, we have what's called spiritual amnesia. We forget all that God has ever done for us because we become so fixated on what's happening right now that we think our problem is bigger than the, tr- the testimony of all God's faithfulness. But I'm going to tell you what, when you're, when you're tempted to look down and be discouraged, you need to look up because God has never changed. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. God is always ready to move. You just need to trust in Him. And trust is formed in the valley, not on the mountaintop. And so he remembers. Look at what he writes in verse 3. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and His praise filled the earth. Teman and Paran were places that God took his people after he had delivered them from Egyptian slavery and bondage. The Lord, listen to me, the Lord is our refuge and our fortress. In him and him alone do we trust. You see, when the Bible says it this way, the name of the Lord is a high tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. When you don't know what's going on, don't let temptation cause you to run from God, but run to him because he is your refuge. He is your fortress. And here he's remembering that God's glory covered the heavens. His praise filled the earth because he remembered this. God, you brought a people out of slavery. Egypt was the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. And you showed up and showed off with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. You delivered your people out of, de- out of bondage, out of slavery, and brought them out. And then what? Soon as they got out, Pharaoh changed his mind and chased the nation. And the next thing you know, they're facing the Red Sea in front of them. And they have the army of Pharaoh behind them. What's going to happen? Nobody had any idea, but I want you to know this. God is the God who comes out of nowhere because he does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. One of the things that thwarts your faith is you trying to figure out how God's going to do it. Guess what? He's God. He knows exactly. All he asks you to do is trust. And trust is hard in the dark. Trust is hard. But that's where strong faith is built. And so what? God splits the sea and and dries the ground so three million people go across a split sea and a dry seabed. And then what? Pharaoh gets so bold and so haughty, he thinks he's going to chase the people of God. I mean, if you not think that God has shown himself as, as powerful, that you need to submit. Some of you are still wrestling with God. It's better just to surrender. And God is God because he has good things in store for your life. He told Paul it's hard to kick against the goads. And some of you out there, you're still kicking against it. But God said, go my way. Because when it doesn't seem that there is a way, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And when the world tells you you can't, you need to hold on to the truth that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Because God is still God. He's the God who comes out of nowhere. So he brings them across. Now their enemies are drowned in the middle of the Red Sea. And God feeds his people with bread from heaven. God brings water to them out of a rock. How many of you know God is never limited by the situations around you? If you get up in your head and you start thinking, scientifically, it doesn't make any sense. How could that be? And you talk yourself out of miracles. Guess what? You'll stay in the place of darkness. But God says, listen, I'm God. I transcend it all. In fact, God was faithful. He brought the people of Israel. He kept his word to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and said, this land shall I give you and when the nation of Israel goes into it think about this see the prophet is remembering God Joshua in the midst of a battle cries out and says son stand still he has no idea 
that the earth is the one rotating, but I want you to know God is not limited. God stopped the earth from rotating for an entire day. You're like, that doesn't make any scientific sense. You're right, because God transcends it all. And as long as you are limited by the circumstances around you, then you limit the faith of what God can and will do in your situation. He's remembering God. You don't change. You have remained the same. That's what you need to remember. That's why you had to hold on. The the stories of the Bible are not just there for the sake of being there. They give you hope because why? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence what? Of what you do not see. If you are bound by the circumstances and situations around you, then the enemy will control it all day long. But God, the unseen God, the almighty God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, He is for you. And if God be for you, then who can be against you? You need to trust in God. Strong faith is built in the valleys. It's remembering that God's God. So look at what he writes in verse 4. He says this, his splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from his hands where his power was hidden. Plague went before him. Pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled and the age-old hills collapsed. But he marches on forever. God is never bound or limited by the things you think are impossible because what's impossible with man is possible with God. And I got good news for you. The Bible also says all things are possible to them that believe. And that's what you need to do is remember. Remember who God is. Habakkuk is remembering. God, you're the one that fed the nation. Not for a day, not for a week. You fed them for 40 years when there was no food supply around. God, you provided richly. God, you've always been the same. You were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fiery furnace. You were with Daniel in a lion's den. You were when the people of Israel reached the very walls of Jericho, but by all natural belief systems, they were impenetrable. They thought, man, we built something that nobody, nobody can ever topple. But guess what? God, but God, who comes out of nowhere. God said, do this and watch. And the walls of Jericho fell. So I want you to know whatever impediment is in your way, whatever people told you was impossible, whatever situation your thought, there is no way. I want you to know with God, he always makes a way. He's the same God. You need to remember who God is because he never changes. I mean, I just want you to think for a minute. Think about the events in your life when God has come through. Just think for a moment. Because again, when trouble comes, we get amnesia. We forget. We get caught up in the present situation. And we forget if God has shown himself good to you in the past, why do you think he would ever not do it now, in this time, in this day, in this situation? Guys, I was in business years ago. And God was blessing my business. But all of a sudden, the company I was representing, they said, we're not gonna write anymore. In other words, I was a salesman who made commission 100%, okay? That's my income. And the company said, no, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna write anymore. Then they made the second decision, we're gonna cancel books of business. So I'm like, you're taking away all the opportunity for me to earn, but I'm gonna tell you what. My best friend and I, we used to go over to his grandparents' house because it had been boarded up for like seven years. We were so hungry for God. We used to meet there every night. And one night, the Lord, I was out of the book of Exodus. Exodus, God spoke to me. Because when Moses, the situation looked impossible. Here was the sea before and the army of Pharaoh behind. You know what God said to, to Moses? He said, stand still and see the salvation of your God. And the Lord said to me, son, stand still and see the salvation of your God. See, when the life is thrown to me, curveballs and situation, God has always been faithful. I opened up and shared some very personal stuff with you last week. As difficult as that was, as confusing as it may have been, I want you to know God has the last word. I have a beautiful wife, Kathy. I have two beautiful boys on that end because God is faithful. He what? change in the situation. You see, even in my life, 
I shared this a few years ago, but I, I went through toxic situations in my life. All these problems, I hadn't learned to, depose it, to dispose of it properly. And it led me to having to go to a mental health clinic. When everybody else said, I'm unfit to do what I'm doing. When everybody else said, well, you know what? He's divorced. You know, he went to a mental health. Who put him in charge? And when the world says, you can't, I'm going to tell you what. God has the last word and God is faithful. That's what I want you to know. You need to remember that God never changes. God is the same. You can't allow. You see, I tell people all the time, don't allow your happiness to be in somebody else's head. And stop allowing people to tell you what to believe in. You need to trust what God said because the word of God is true. Let every man be a liar and that you may be justified in your sayings and overcome when you are judged. You see, your praise is the voice of your faith. That's what you need to remember. It's in those moments that you remember God because faith trusts that he did it before and he can do it again. If he did it before, he will do it again. I told you last week, God said to me, if you learn the, the lesson of Joseph's two kids, I will do for you what I did for him so I can tell you right now, God did it before, God did it again. And he will do the same for you. Faith, trust that he did it before and he can do it again. So the second thing you do when you're in the valley, listen, is you embrace. You see, when you remember who God is and what God's done, then you need to embrace that. That's where your hope lies. Habakkuk, it looked like his enemies were winning. It looked like the Babylonians had the advantage. Yet God is still on his throne. And that's what you need to realize. You get caught up listening to news, watching things around you, but I want you to know God hasn't changed. God is the same. And God is still on his throne. He is faithful. That's where you need to find your refuge. That's why Jesus told us, if you hear my words and listen to them and do what I say. Hear that part? So you come into church, just listen to me and go, away. Ooh, that was expiring and forget everything I said. No, no, no. He said this. If you build your life on what I said, then what? When the storms come. He didn't say if they come. When the storms come, when all the other houses are falling down around you, yours will remain standing. Because in a world of sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. You and I need to know, he is the same. He never changes. And therefore you need to embrace that. That God is faithful. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken. Nor their seed out begging for bread. You need to recognize God has been faithful. He has a faith track record. That's why it's important to get in scripture. That's why it's important to be in the Bible. Because all of the stories in the Bible, they give us hope. Because why? Why is hope so important? Biblical hope is a confident expectation of a favorable future. And why would I have a confident expectation? Because God has never changed. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, praise before provision. Faith always precedes God's moving in those ends. And that's what the Bible teaches us. You see, think about Abraham for a moment. What well, looked impossible, God came to Abraham and said, listen, Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make a great nation out of you. And all the nations of the world will be blessed through you. Abraham sees God faithful and prospering him. But Abraham starts to doubt and wonder and wrestle with the idea, I got no heir. Sarah and I still don't have any baby. And he says to God one day, he says, listen, the heir of my house is a man named Eliezer, one of my servants. And God said to him, no, that will not be your heir. But the one born from you will be your heir. And he said, come on, take a walk with me. Come on, Abraham, look up at the stars. Count them if you can. He said, so shall your seed be. And Abraham, here's what the Bible says. Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him for righteousness. And that's why when you have the word that God has spoken, when you know what God has said against hope, you can believe in hope. That's what Abraham did according to that which was spoken. And he being not weak in faith, did not stagger over the promises of God because of his age or the, wife, or the age of his wife. But he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was well 
able to perform. That's the essence of faith. The realization, God is God, I'm not. He has never failed. I trust you. I believe in you. See, people have mixed up faith. Faith is not denying what's going on. I've heard people try to do that. You know, oh no, I don't believe that. No, 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 faith doesn't deny. Faith is not calling what is as though it's not. Faith calls what's not as though it is. It says, that may be my way. You may have had a, a medical report. You may have had something come down that way, but you remember this. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's you know, uh, 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 mercies that we are not consumed. His faithfulness endures forever. Listen, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and do not what? Forget all of His promises. He forgives all of our sins. He heals all of our diseases. Build your life upon what God said, not the opinions of others around you. Embracing the truth. We always have a choice. Jesus told us that. Listen, he said, don't worry. And if you're struggling in that, take a walk. Look at the birds. God is faithful. Faith is choosing to trust God despite what's going on around you. Despite by me not understanding what's happening. Faith is a choice to believe in God because of who he is, because of his character. That's the theme of this book that we've been studying, the just shall live by faith. Look what Habakkuk wrote in verse 16. <clears throat> He said, I heard and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. In other words, God, you're just. I know you'll handle it. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Now, if that was the circumstance, that's pretty depressing, is it not? But look at what the prophet says. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The Bible is the realization God can be trusted. That's why the New Testament tells us, I believed, therefore have I spoken. Because I look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Because the things which are seen are temporary. They're temporal. They're subject to change. But the things that are eternal last forever. God is faithful. Embracing the truth of who God is. He says, listen, don't allow your faith or your praise to be controlled by the circumstances around you, but let it be in this realization. It's praise for who God is, not for what's going on around. And that's where it needs to be. Full-blown, passionate, in-depth from our soul. Faith is the realization God is God. See, but to get here, the prophet Habakkuk, he had gone through the time of wondering. He went through the time of waiting, but he settled on this, to trust in God. And look at verse 19, he said, the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread upon the heights. See, drawing into God, maybe all the circumstances don't change immediately, but your faith is not dictated by what you see. The Bible tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. See, we may enjoy God on the mountaintops, but we learn to trust him in the valleys. So don't walk away when life doesn't go the way you thought, when you don't understand, when you're wondering, run to God, not from him. That's what chapter one teaches us. What I told you, don't quit in the dip. In other words, wait on God. Chapter two teaches us to wait because why? If it's not God's time, you can't force it, but when it's God's time, you can't stop it. You see, you'll never have a chapter three faith without wondering and waiting. And so it's important. You'll never have strong faith without wondering and waiting. So listen, the strongest faith is trusting God no matter what comes your way. Because why? Because he's God. He never, ever changes. So don't lose hope. Hope is a confident expectation of a favorable future. He did it before, and guess what, my friends? He can do it again. That's what we need to understand. The just shall live by faith.
faith. If God did it before, then He can do it again. Stand with me to your feet right now. I think it's important that we give some passionate praise to what you just heard and allow this truth to be embedded in your heart. You did it before. You've never failed. God, we trust you. We'll do it again.